Hi there, my name's Ben and I work for PK Technology here in the UK. And today we're going to be looking at the Reference Waveform Library. So some of you may be aware of the Waveform Library from Picascope 6 and that it's now migrated to Picascope 7 only. And there's a number of reasons as to why that's taken place, but fundamentally it will hopefully help improve and be more stable and allow you to actually do more with the library in the future. For those of you that aren't aware of what the library is, well, Underneath it all, it is basically a place that allows you to store and upload your waveforms into a cloud-based storage facility. In the background, that also means we can use those waveforms into the public library. So anything that you upload has the potential to actually make it into a public library where anyone anywhere in the world can actually pull down your waveform to compare with a similar vehicle or maybe compare a similar signal to something that they have and uh, don't have a system as vehicle or another comparison um, locally to where they are. How it can help? Well, fundamentally, the waveform library is there to allow you to safely back up your waveforms. So you no longer need to rely on the memory within the PC that you're working on. Once you've uploaded them, they're there for you to view anywhere in the world on any other PC, providing you have a peak, an automotive peak scope connected. It does come free with the software. I mean, that's a massive plus. You get all of this storage facility free of charge with the software. I said, but you do need to have your Pigscope connected to your laptop in order to actually access the library and use it. So how to use it? First and foremost, we actually have to have an internet connection. Um, we need to have Pigscope 7 Automotive running and we need to have an automotive oscilloscope connected. To actually find the waveform library within the tool menu, if I just back out a step, it will either be listed directly in your favourites in the favourite toolbar on the left hand side, and you can see there it's waveform library, or by clicking the more panel and then scrolling down um, we should have the waveform library at the bottom. When you click the icon for the waveform library you will be presented with a new window and it will ask you to log in to the waveform library. If you don't already have an account, you can set one up by clicking register and that will take you through to the forum on our picoauto.com website and allow you to register from there. You will receive an email which will require activation. Once you're all activated and ready to go, it will give you access to the library. So if I sign myself in using the username and password you've used to sign up to the Waveform library and the uh, automotive forum, once we hit logging, we should be good to go. Let's maximize that screen. And as you can see, we've got an automotive scope connected. It's come up with the type of scope it is, along with the serial number. If I was to drop the connection from that, it will actually ask you to connect the device and actually lock you out of the waveform library. So as we said before, you need an automotive oscilloscope. As we did before in the previous generation reference waveform library, you need that automotive scope connected in order to access the library. So straight away, the, the layout looks similar. Um, the search panel on the left-hand side is obviously where we search and put all of our search fields in. And the drop-downs exist for all the makes and models. And what we've actually done is cleaned up some of this data as well. So you're only seeing vehicles that are actually in the public library. Listed beside here in brackets is the number of waveforms that are associated with that particular make. And obviously if we were to filter down, we'd be then had to be searched by model as well. Some of the other things to notice as well, so this is the main search facility, is my waveforms. Now when we spoke about earlier where we could access all of our, own, our waveforms that we've already uploaded. If we actually go into this, you'll see them all listed. Now, these are your waveforms, so they stay with your account. Um, if, for a reason, they are not made public, there may be something wrong with the channel label or the data in it may not actually be of much use, we might not display that in the public library. However, it will stay in your library section. From here, you can obviously upload, um, sorry, or download, actually, and pull that waveform into the Picascope 7 software as we did before, and there we go. So now we actually have our reference waveform library that's been pulled into Picascope 7 software, and that allows us to manipulate and actually search through that, uh, through that data. And again, if we wanted to, and we got an automotive scope connected, we actually can then run that as a test. 
References can also be pulled in um, exactly the same as what they were before. So if we had, uh, if we looked on this particular uh, waveform, if I just run with found probes, because we've not got any connected for the time being, we now get all of the data coming up, which is fine, and we can see information scrolling. Now, if I stop that for a second, go back to the waveform library, and then load in these references, we can now see that that gets pulled in. And we can open all of those and load them all in as we see fit. So there we go. Now we have our references, not the whole file, just a reference of that waveform from that particular file. A few things to look out for with that is obviously if you're on a different time base to the original file that was captured, there may be some discrepancies with there. Um, Steve Smith's actually just literally posted an article on the forum which explains actually how to sort of manipulate those waveforms to get them into the same order using the delay feature for those reference waveforms that have been pulled in. Back to the library then. So this is obviously where all of our waveforms are. We can edit these. So let's go in and edit a waveform. This is very much the same as the save dialog box that comes up in Pixscope 7 software. So from here, you'd be able to fill in the additional details. For instance, if I wanted to add in um, pump control, uh, so for this particular waveform, um, the AdBlue pump control signal, if I wanted to maybe add in the wire color, so red wire, pin, six you can add all of those details in after you've uploaded the file to the to the um, to the reference waveform library there is still the minimum amount of upload detail that you need to put into the actual file when you upload uh, but we'll go over that shortly if we just go back to the search facility for a second here we actually have all of our waveforms and if we wanted to pull something in as exactly the same as we did with the, your own waveforms, you just click on the open button and it will load in the background in Pixscope 7 software. So moving into saving and upload then, what, how do we do that from within the Pixscope 7 software? So if we minimize the library for a second, we still have our previous capture that we downloaded on the screen. So what I'm gonna do now is open up another existing file and then we're going to show how to fill in the details in order to, to get that file uploaded into the library and then ultimately onto the public library. So here we have a file. So same as before, we'd click save. And then we'd actually have to fill out the details. So make, this particular vehicle was a DAF lorry. The model, it was an LF. And the year, it was a 2020 model. You can fill out the rest of the other bits, so whether or not the transmission is, but basically anything with an asterisk beside it needs to have a field completed in order for the upload option to appear to get your, that particular waveform into the library. So we need to do primary fill, which is diesel, and the sealer capacity, which for this vehicle was, can't remember, 6.7. Let's go with that. Automatically, the cubic inches is then populated at the same time. The channel labels have been filled out, and at this point you can make any amendments, but you should now see that the Save and Upload button has now become available to uh, select. So we click Save and Upload. We then get the, there are no currently uh, waveforms being, the waveform library will appear. Let's just go back to here so you can see what's going on in the background. We now have this file being transmitted and uploaded into your waveform library. What you'll notice is that this is going on in the background. So actually, you can go back to Peakscope 7 now and actually carry on using it whilst the upload is taking place. That is something very new and very different from what Peakscope 6 used to do, where it would wait until you had up finished uploading it. If there's any problems at this point, it will get flagged up with that um, it's a failed upload. It doesn't automatically stop uploading and then start again. So say, for instance, if your internet connection had dropped out, um, it would need to be re-uploaded again, so it would restart, okay? Once you've got the green tick beside it, happy days. It is now, will appear in your waveforms. So if I go back to my waveforms, and there that, that file is now there. With all the information, it won't be yet available in the public library though. So that's something that we have to um, 
check within the administration side of the PK Waveform Library. So one of us um, representatives, we will actually go through all of those files that have been uploaded. Just check them for plausibility more than anything. So say if you've put on a, you know, an injector for um, a petrol cylinder and actually the waveform looks like a relative compression check, for example, that gives us the opportunity to actually clean up some of that data and just put it right to obviously then make the actual public library uh, they have better, de better data and obviously better filtering for people. Um, so that's all that we really do behind the scenes when it comes to the public library. There's no, it's nothing like we can, can't pull your waveform out and change all the data and stuff like that. Um, no, we're not doing that. We're not verifying the signals either in the sense that we're going to be getting the same vehicle in to check those patterns. No, it's just purely a plausibility. Is that waveform representative of what you've told us it is? And that is pretty much it. But hopefully we should start seeing better quality of data and uh, uh, that will then lead to a better search, uh, more improved search facility. So let's save and upload and obviously download. So how about actually searching through the Waveform Library public side? We touched on it briefly earlier, so we'll have a look for um, a particular make. In this case, we may be looking for a Volkswagen and maybe looking at a transporter. So we can already see we just, all I've done there is just typed in a few of the beginning characters uh, or letters for the, the particular make and model, and it will automatically start filtering through um, the table and to bring the closest one to it. So we can see we have 19 waveforms for transporter. Now we could just search at that point. So we hit the search button, and there we have all of our waveforms. But one of the benefits for the waveform library is obviously a cam and crank correlation. So a known good cam and crank would be lovely. So we'd start typing in the label for crankshaft sensor. Uh, let's go hall effect. We've got six of those. We could just leave it at that and search and find our waveform. And actually there is one that actually has popped up at the top. Or we could add another label in. So by default, there is only one option for channel labels and you can add as as many, well, two is probably going to be our limit in this case. We're just after cam and crank. So then the second one would be camshaft sensor, which has actually already popped up at the top. So we'll look for those, search again, and that should just filter out all of those ones that just had uh, a single crankshaft signal, but not the camshaft on the, on the, on the actual waveform. Once we've got those on the screen, again, it's exactly the same process as it was earlier with my waveforms. Click the open button, then in the background, this file will now be loaded on the screen. Now, at this point, we can choose to connect to the vehicle and just run the test. Um, a little tip actually here would be to create references of those two signals. The reason why we don't just automatically load in as we did earlier, a reference, um, is because your time base may be different, as we said earlier. If you load the full file, we then get this guided test aspect to the waveform library. In order to maintain your known goods that you've pulled down, we would need to create a reference waveform of those. So if we go to more, and then reference waveforms, all we're gonna do is click A, to make a reference of channel A and B to make a reference of channel B. And you'll now see that we have additional axes appear. So these are now becoming our new channels. The reason for doing that is if once we start the actual capture and start doing the cap capturing itself, the two waveforms that we've pulled in from the library will then disappear because they are on the active channel. By making a reference means we always maintain that data on the screen. To help view these slightly easier on the eye as well, we can actually add an additional scope view, which will then bring our active scope at the bottom. And then if we wanted to remove the two active channels from scope view one at the top, if we deselect A and B, we are left with our waveform that we've pulled down from our library. If we click start, we obviously haven't got our BNC plus probes in, so we're getting probe mismatch come up. And there we go. So we actually have our waveform that we've pulled down from the library 
and then our active channel at the bottom there. So now we can actually do direct comparisons between the two signals. So just to go through some of the other search facilities within the new waveform library, if we go back into the library itself, and obviously we have our previous search criteria, what we're going to do is we're going to clear the whole lot and start again. And I just want to talk through the different view, view, ways that you can view the, uh, the actual search um, panel itself. So at the moment we have yeah, page one, of ten, 1 to 10, so that's the number of waveforms that are visible on that one page. You can extend that, so you can go to 20, um, or just use the left and right buttons to the side of that to actually um, page, and page through all of that list. So yeah, 11 to 20, I think we all get the idea. Um, there is a different way to view, so there's actually a grid view now as well. So that will actually make the image more apparent and give you less detail. In the panels that are displaying the, the waveform itself as an image, you can actually click those and it will actually make, just zoom in on those a little bit more just so you can see if it's not quite clear what the image is, you can use the zoom tool there to actually focus in a bit more. And obviously there's some other additional ways that we can sort the data um, in the main, my waveform library section. So if we just quickly look in there as well. So again, we have the same aspect, so we have the grid view as well. You have the left to right button to actually sort through your results. And we can obviously sort this data as well now by um, date order. So it will either give you the most recent or the very first waveform that you've uploaded. Um, typically, I wouldn't worry about changing that, I'll just keep it to your most recent waveforms. Um, whilst also, obviously, giving the public, uh, public PICO community access to, uh, to this data. I mean, it's all good stuff and it's all down to you guys out there uploading and giving the waveforms for everybody to use and share. Um, thanks very much for watching. I hope this helps and we'll see you on the next adventure.